Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us from. I'm Tracy Miranda. I'm the executive director of the Continuous Delivery Foundation, and I'll be on hand for the next 20 minutes to answer any questions you might have about CI, CD, or DevOps, or anything. I'm coming to you. Um, from Ottawa, Canada, where it has incredibly just started snowing. So I make that 169 days we've had without snow. So to distract me from the cold weather, uh, please keep your questions coming in and I'll be happy to answer those. So if you ha aren't familiar with the platform, we have a Q&A tab uh, over to the right uh, by the chat and you can go ahead and drop any questions inside there. And while you were doing that, I want to highlight um, some news I've just seen today. So there's a new um, open source job report that came out. And um, this is talking about you know, what hiring managers are looking for. And one of the key things that that report pointed out is that there's been a huge spike in demand for DevOps job. So from all the different areas, uh, people are definitely looking for folks who have experience with DevOps tools and practices. Uh, so that's certainly consistent with what we're seeing at the Continuous Delivery Foundation, that um, there's a really high demand. There's a much, much greater appreciation that delivering software has become a huge differentiator for any sort of company, um, whether you're a bank or a retail business or a software company, uh, it doesn't make a difference. You need to uh, now differentiate through software. And the folks who can make this happen, who can deliver software effectively, are the DevOps folks. So yeah, not surprise. Uh, it's an amazing area to be in. And further than that, the, the report goes on to say that uh, open source jobs like folks who have experience with open source, there's, there's actually a dearth of them. So a uh, huge demand for people who are um, who have the open source skills, who get engaged with projects. OK, so I'm just going to. Okay, so what I'm going to do um, is just talk a little bit about the Continuous Delivery Foundation and what our role is in um, the whole kind of DevOps ecosystem. So the Continuous Delivery Foundation uh, is an open source foundation and it's the home to um, some of the you know most popular and fastest growing projects uh, for continuous delivery. So many people have heard of Jenkins. Uh, there's Jenkins and Spinnaker. Those are two projects very widely adopted for CI and CD. And then you have the projects which are newer in the space tackling problems around cloud native. So this is uh, Tekton and Jenkins X. OK, um, I'm going to interrupt. So we have a question uh, which I will answer live, and it says, what defines DevOps as a job spec? OK, so um, I think for when we talk about DevOps jobs, uh, I think there's definitely different camps of how people see this. So there's often controversy around this because um, when we think about the original definition of how DevOps came to be, it, it was all about breaking down silos between the dev side of the house who uh, you know, traditionally perceived as tossing the code over to the ops and then the ops um, who, who would then deliver that. So if you think about DevOps as a culture, then perhaps, you know, DevOps as a job spec doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, nevertheless, um, I think over time, the term DevOps has evolved and, you know, correctly or incorrectly, it, it stands to represent um, that whole set of practices which kind of evolve from the upside but relate to to all the tools there so um, depending on your perspective um, some people will take a kind of more pure idea of DevOps where 
the DevOps team is actually the team who are in place to help um, the dev folks, uh, you know, integrate with ops and kind of be those bridge builders where others take a more simplified view where DevOps tends to be kind of this umbrella for, um, you know, how to use tools, whether it's, you know, Jenkins or Spinnaker or Terraform. So we see that term DevOps used in both those ways. Um, in particular, like, I don't want to get caught up in, in too much, like, which one is right or which one is wrong. I think it's useful if many people use it in a common way to uh, to use it that way. So I think DevOps is just focused on the delivery of software and um, a role where you, you want to break down barriers and work with the tools to get the software delivered. So, yeah, I think depending on where you go, you might see different definitions from everything from ops tooling um, to a more higher level. Interestingly enough, um, we're chatting with some folks um, at the Continuous Delivery Foundation. We have a working group focused around interoperability, and we also have conversations there about being better about defining things so we can avoid some of this confusion. And one interesting trend um, that's emerging there is uh, in the past, we've seen many companies have had teams that they specifically call DevOps. And this is kind of, you know, to some people, this is a bit problematic because if the idea is to break down silos between different teams, then setting up a new team called DevOps um, perhaps doesn't kind of match that ethos. But what we are starting to see is, you know, first we saw lots of companies set up DevOps team as their kind of way of saying, okay, we're going to focus on this. Then as, as they kind of mature or things evolve, um, then they find that actually they, they might rename those teams to better reflect what they're doing. And one great example we had um, was a company called uh, Ghostbot Check, and they um, are renaming their DevOps team to be CloudOps. Um, to better reflect that actually what this team is doing is managing the operations and the interaction with the cloud, um, everything from kind of the account management to the scaling and to uh, adopting different technologies. So I think that's an interesting trend we'll see more about. Okay, um, so I hope that answers that question. And uh, if you want to do any follow-ups, uh, please just let me know. Okay, another question um, that's come in is, what is the difference between continuous integration, continuous deployment, and continuous delivery? So that's a great question because uh, we do get um, a lot of conversations in the community um, discussing this. And it is a, a point of contention because different people, again, see the definition differently. and. The reason that could be a problem is um, if you're talking at cross purposes with someone else or um, it leads to kind of a misunderstanding. Now, continuous integration, I think um, that is pretty, how we see that is that is where um, developers or practitioners are constantly committing code and it's being um, built, like I don't wanna use the word integrated, but it's being, whatever the process is to bring it into the main line, the tests are being run, and it makes sure that, you know, your working copy is, is always up to date. And this is as opposed to once upon a time where integration would only happen uh, as a big bang effect. So the, the continuous uh, is important. So you typically want that to happen once a day. Um, and so you're avoiding the situation where code gets committed uh, you know, once a year or things like that. Now on continuous deployment and continuous delivery, uh, I think these terms get used interchangeably. Uh, personally, I, I think it's really important that continuous delivery um, represents the entire set of practices um, that you must undertake to keep your code in a state where you're ready to deliver. So I'd like to see it um, more defined as an engineering approach or even a discipline. But oftentimes uh, people narrow that definition and they use it to reflect um, kind of just the deployment stage of, of the, the pipeline. 
So then continuous delivery and continuous deployment get munched into the similar thing where continuous deployment refers to, you know, actually getting your code out into production um, and all, all the stages that lead up to that. So some places you'll read definitions and they will just say deployment and delivery only have the slight difference. Um, but really, I, I think you need to see delivery as the overall set of practices, which does include continuous integration, uh, continuous deployment or automated deployment. And uh, it does include other things as well. So testing, uh, security, uh, test data management. And one of the, the great places um, like the Accelerate book by Nicole Fosgren and others, I think that kind of gives an overview of how meaty continuous delivery is and it breaks it down into these eight different capabilities. So I personally like to separate that where continuous deployment can refer to just kind of the automated deploy, um, things that you're pushing things between environments and finally out to production. Okay, uh, let me find a way to mark the questions as answered. And Okay, so I don't know if we've got some support. Um, I see the question and I can't seem to answer uh, one of, I can't seem to mark it as answered live. Um, so just, I will try and figure that out. Okay, so the next question we have coming in is which tools can I use for uh, CICD? So continuous integration or continuous de deployment and delivery. So uh, this is kind of a big question because um, it really depends, but I, I want to give you some indicators as to how you can go about thinking about, you know, what tools um, do I use? Now, traditionally, um, you know, one of the defining tools um, for this has been Jenkins and almost everybody has in some way or the other use Jenkins. Now Jenkins, while we often think of it as a CI CD tool, it, it really is much more powerful and much more flexible than that. So it is Jenkins is the ultimate sort of automation server and it is really, really amazing. Its sweet spot is for continuous integration. So that is kind of where the initial growth in Jenkins used. It helped kind of define uh, a it just helped lots of people to manage their their CI in, in the early days. And then it built on that and it evolved to have um, pipelines, which would help you um, actually deploy the code. And in fact, now these days, uh, we have a lot more people using Jenkins pipelines than um, Jenkins uh, kind of freeform jobs. But if we go um, beyond that, in recent years, the whole landscape has really exploded and we've had a lot of different kinds of tools come in. And one of the key drivers for this has been the emergence of cloud native technologies. And what the difference with cloud native um, to what was there before is that you have this real strong distributed model, um, which allows endless scaling, like you can scale horizontally, you can scale vertically, and it really is kind of very, very powerful. And the same time as cloud native technologies have emerged, we have um, a, a lot of different things changing about how we um, write and deliver software. So this includes things like um, the move to microservices. Uh, traditionally teams would work on uh, a single code base, so a monolithic code base, and they would deliver to um, very few environments. Now, with the onset of microservices and cloud native technologies, uh, what we're seeing is now uh, teams delivering software have to contend with many more um, like locations with the code 
uh, it changes what the definition of the application is, and there's you know a, a big prolifer proliferation of environments to deliver to. And as a result, um, we have a lot more tools emerging, and um, I'm going to drop a link to the continuous delivery landscape, which is where we're trying to categorize and kind of set out all the different tools that come together to help you deliver software. And because traditionally we've fallen into this, you know, do CI, CD, which leads people to think, I need a CI tool and a CD tool. And that's it, my job is done. Um, it's actually much more involved than that. And it does depend, you know, are you starting a greenfield project? Um, are you looking at cloud native? Are you trying to move something existing? Uh, and then that the, you also have options for um, managed services uh, as software as a service. So um, the landscape tends to give you kind of breakdown into big overarching chunks, what the different kinds of areas are, and then give you tool suggestions in each one. And then you'll see in some categories, um, this is broken up by cloud native and traditional. So there's a category there around infrastructure deployments. Now this, uh, it is an early version of the, the landscape, so it's pretty new and we do welcome, it's open source, so we do welcome contributions. Um, so if you have a tool that you're seeing is not there, please feel free to um, submit a pull request and we have a few guidelines and uh, we can um, add that to it. Okay, I'm gonna click that as answered live. Okay, we have another question that's come in um, and from Eugene, and it says, what are the benefits to join the Continuous Delivery Foundation umbrella for the OSS project, a part of being a Linux Foundation project? Marketing infrastructure, funding opportunities. Can you please explore this topic? Okay, yes. So uh, I assume this is asking about um, from the perspective of an open source project. So it's a great question. So why um, would an open source project choose to join the Continuous Delivery Project Foundation? So we are an umbrella foundation, uh, similar to the CNCF. Uh, we are a sub foundation of the Linux Foundation. So we consider CNCF to be like a sibling organization. And under this umbrella, um, really where Continuous Delivery Foundation helps the projects is by helping them grow um, and taking care of a lot of the things that you need for an open source project that um, can benefit from doing them together. So for example, um, we offer a whole bunch of services. Um, so we have um, a technical oversight committee which brings kind of the leaders of the project together. And then examples of things where we help. Okay, so you brought up marketing, um, that, that's a good one. And that ties in a lot to our events. So for instance, we had a CDCon which we ran um, two weeks ago and we had each of the projects there and we provided a space for folks to uh, come and meet the project uh, leaders. Those were some of the best conversations. Um, so it's giving, helping with that organization of the project. We're also running Hacktoberfest across all the projects. So we bring the projects together. We help promote, we let you know how to, you know, structure your project for Hacktoberfest. Uh, it's an amazing way to get new contributors. So bringing in new people through these programs. We also sponsor mentorship through programs like Outreachy, which projects use to increase the diversity of the contributor base. Uh, we provide support for Google Summer of Code and upcoming Google Season of Docs to help improve documentation. On top of that, there's some other fun stuff. Um, we, the Continuous Delivery Foundation does some logos for projects. If you've ever seen the Tecton project, and Tecton Friends, it's got some great uh, logos. So we'll set up logos for each of the projects. We also have a continuous delivery store, um, which has swag, um, which we, and I'm gonna find a link to this. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to do that as I talk. So we have a store, um, which again, we offer to all our projects. Uh, we also deal with trademark and licensing issues. So that we find projects, you know, typically they want to focus on the code. So we're doing all um, the periphery things. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. I think we are out of time, but feel free. Please feel free, anybody, if you want to follow up with any questions. I am Team Miranda at cd.foundation. Thanks very much for attending, and please feel free to follow up with me and uh, come get involved with the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>